Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for August the 2nd, 2016. We have Tropical Storm Earl now, and as of the 2 o'clock intermediate advisory, Earl is a little stronger. Top winds now 50 miles per hour, the pressure 1,002 millibars, so that air pressure not very low. We can look at the forecast track. Overall, it is headed towards the center of circulation anyway. More than likely somewhere in Belize, the central part of the Yucatan Peninsula here, may be coming back out over parts of the Bay of Campeche. We'll have to see about that. Some of the modeling indicating that it could just get buried over land here. Somewhere within this cone of uncertainty, or the error cone, lots of different ways to look at that, uh, is where this should end up. Tropical storm watches and warnings and a hurricane watch uh, posted for parts of the Yucatan. Interest up here in Cancun and Cozumel, no worries from this. It'll stay well south of your location. So if you have vacation plans there, don't cancel them, change them, alter them, whatever. It's going to be just fine. Looking at the satellite picture, this is certainly a system that has struggled ever since it entered the Caribbean Sea, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. You can tell it really looks nebulous. That's the best way to describe it very filament kind of uh, you know different streamers coming off there's one right there trying to come in it's like what's going on here with this system and the word nebulous comes to mind that it is not s shaped you know like you would see with a system trying to feed in bands around it or whatever you don't have that s shape overall uh, no spiral bands to speak of maybe a few right down here near the surface of the earth associated with the low-level center, obviously just above the ocean, but the organization is very poor, and that is represented well in the vorticity signature here. Uh, when you have these little lobes coming off, these pieces of energy, and it's not round in its appearance, that just tells me that this is not organized, and you can certainly look at the satellite picture and deduce that as well. The upper-level winds, not especially favorable, uh, increasing shear across this area as of late. Just a small area around Earl of favorability for upper level winds. Supposedly, and you know, certainly in the path over this way, the upper level winds are supposed to get better, but we're talking a pretty narrow gauntlet for this to travel in order for it to strengthen. It's interesting, nothing has developed in this part of the Caribbean Sea, the eastern part, in the first 10 days of August. These are the points of origin over the past 100 plus years and Earl really didn't get its name until just about over here this dot is from some previous storm there will be a new one I guess we could just come in here and add one right and uh, so there's Earl or something like that close enough but you can see that my point here is that the Caribbean Sea typically not very uh, hospitable for development and there's a lot of reasons behind that that I don't have time to go into today I want to keep this as brief and on point as possible, but Earl really didn't break precedence. You know, it's not like um, it developed early, okay? It developed where the other three have this time of year, or they just go on and become something in the Eastern Pacific, uh, or they develop here before entering the Caribbean Sea. So that's just interesting to note. Despite the favorable upper ocean heat content, Earl located in this area, so very, very warm ocean temperatures, and that warm water extends deep into the ocean, so that's not an inhibiting factor. Eh, well, you know, who knows, right? We'll talk about more about the intensity in a moment. The track envelope is interesting to some extent. You do have a larger spread between some of the models here now, uh, burying it into Central America and Mexico, and some of them further north into the Gulf, but I really wouldn't worry about that. Strong high pressure, and this was mentioned in the discussion today, uh, over the uh, eastern United States and extending westward from the Bermuda High over the Atlantic is going to keep Earl confined to the south, so it's not going to be coming into the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so looking at the intensity plot, getting rid of some of these windows here, the overall guidance, if we look at this as making landfill in the next 48 hours or so, it really doesn't look like it's going to make it to hurricane strength. It could. You never say never with these systems, that's for sure. But even the more aggressive ship's guidance here waits until later in the period for this to intensify. 
So in Belize, you don't really have much to worry about with this system. Heavy rain, tropical storm conditions, but this is nothing like what you have seen in the past. Uh, don't want to downplay it, but also don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill. Okay, and people down in that area are preparing accordingly. Tourists, residents alike, they know what to do with these situations. And since this is not a hurricane, and certainly not an intense hurricane heading their way, I'm not too worried about it. So, you know, you, you, you prepare accordingly, and you respect what's coming your way, and don't do anything foolish, and everything should be okay. Now, a couple of people asked me about the cold blob, or the cold pool of water in the North Atlantic, this was talked about a lot preseason and right as the season began as possibly being an inhibiting factor for the Atlantic Basin this year. So this is what it looked like back on June the 2nd, right there. And there it is. You can plainly see. Let me outline it in red. There it is. Pretty cold off of Greenland and Iceland. Now let's fast forward to the present. Yesterday. I don't even have to say anything. I mean... It's gone, and it has been replaced by much warmer uh, sea surface temperatures, even the main development region a lot warmer than normal, as is the Western Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf. And when you add that up uh, with the, and couple it with the cold equatorial Pacific, not quite La Nina conditions, but again, this textbook classification, well, it has to be a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, and then it's technically classified as La Nina, some of it, you know, it's like, well, you look at it and you say, well, the water is cold now in the equatorial Pacific, and it's very warm in the Atlantic, especially in the tropics. The North Atlantic has warmed. What's the holdup? So I think that uh, August and September here, especially later August through September and into October, are going to be very busy in the Atlantic. And like I said the other day, if I'm wrong, that is great news for everybody that lives along the coast. Let's look at it that way. One instance where being wrong could be good for people, because if I'm right, well, there could be a lot of hardship, which we'll discuss as it comes along, assuming that it does. I also had a question about the GFS and where you could look at the different layers of the atmosphere. So a couple of simple ways to get to it. Go to Google or your favorite search engine and type in INCEP, like right there, INCEP, N-C-E-P, GFS, two different words, or whatever you call it, and uh, the search result should bring you the top one to this page right here, the Model Analysis and Guidance. Click on Model Guidance. I like to go to the Atlantic, for example, GFS. And then there's all the different layers of the atmosphere for you and precipitation types, heights of the atmosphere, relative humidity, temperature, vorticity, which is spin. Uh, it's all there. And just as an example, the 850 vorticity and height charts all the way out to two weeks. If we look, for example, at the 24-hour one uh, from the 12Z run of the GFS today, you can click on View Image, and it pops up the image by itself. And voila, you have a look at the atmosphere. There's the subtropical ridge over the eastern Atlantic and an extension of it here going westward, uh, keeping Earl buried down in the Caribbean, for example. And then you can also see the vorticity signature uh, around these different features in the atmosphere. So hopefully that'll help for those that are interested. I always enjoy the feedback, and I try to answer what I can when I can. If you have a question, post it on the YouTube comments or on social media, and I'll do the very best, best that I can to answer for you. All right, so again with Earl, yep, yeah, it's going to hit Belize, it looks like, but nope, not going to be a very big deal. All right, certainly something, again, to take into consideration and to prepare accordingly for but you see as well as I do, this is not a well-organized system, and it's beginning to run out of time. Hopefully it'll stay that way, because that's a beautiful country down there. The coast is fantastic. Never been, but I've got a lot of friends and colleagues who have, and we'd like for it to stay that way, as I'm sure, I'm sure they would too. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in as always. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll be back again tomorrow.